Welcome, this is Princess with DMV Experience. I am so glad you came and joined us today. We're gonna to go back to the summit with First Lady Christian Zimmerman with True Foundation Apostolic Ministry. So watch this and I'll see you later. Oh, 
Should I or shouldn't I? So some, you have to be gentle when you're dealing with them as well. Just let them know, I just want to help. Give distance between them and just let them know, I want to help you. Is that okay? Don't just say, here, let me help you. They're like, whoa, back up. Too quick. <laughs> you know? So always treat your elderly people with respect and always greet them when you enter into a room. Don't address elderly and seniors by their names unless they have especially asked you to, specifically asked you to. Stand up or, right, stand up when an elderly or a guest enters the room and do not sit until you have offered them a seat. Do not let an elderly person stand up in any situation, any room that you're in. If there's, a, if there's no more seats in the room, as a younger person, we should offer our seats. I've actually been in situations where I've offered my seat and there were men in the room. And I feel like they should have offered the seat to the elderly woman. But they didn't. And even if it's an elderly man. And even if a man is not doing it as women, yes, yeah, we should do it. As young women, we should really do it. Because that person could be tired. They may have a long way to go or they may have had a long trip to where they're coming, and they're just tired, okay? If an elderly person enters a bus or a train, the younger should offer their seat. How many of you have seen people on the subway and on the bus, elderly people standing up, and young people just like, Mm. Well, they are there, boom, boom. The, the headphones are going and they're going. They're just having a field day. Or they're just like, ooh, they got their eyes open. And they say, hey, how you doing, pops? And they're just still going, going, going. And it's like, are you not seeing the big picture here? This person needs a seat on the bus, on the train, possibly in church, wherever. If you see them, just help them out. A man should always offer a woman always offer the woman to enter a room first at dinner at a restaurant the man moves a chair away from the table and offers the woman a seat as i mentioned before chivalry is not dead these are just good manners good manners especially if you're dating if this person can't do this for you something's wrong it's, it's one of those things i have a, a i had a list and it was the good things, the pros and the cons. Okay, these are the things that I expect. Are you doing them? If I have to check that as a con, it's like, okay, we got one mark over there. Let's see how many, which one is, that? which list is gonna be the biggest list? If it's more cons than pros, it's time to go. Know your worth. Know your worth, it's so important. Introduce guests to everyone in your home. Greet others when you enter a room. I think we've already covered that. It's important that you greet others. When leaving a place, a man should help a woman put on her coat. Wait until everyone is served before eating and always start eating after the host has started. It shows consideration. We went out last night to eat and it was awfully late when we went out, but I did. I honestly, I, I said it, and I, I will tell you the same thing. I was extremely hungry, and I needed to have something to eat because I'm diabetic. So I just, I basically told her, well, I'm so sorry, but I need to get something to eat. But it's so important that if you're not sick, try to wait for everyone's food to be received at a table before you eat. It's good manners. Some people will look and they will just, as soon as that plate comes, they're going in for it. They haven't said grace, they haven't done anything, haven't thanked the Lord about anything. And they're just digging into the table and everybody's looking at them like, wow, did you bless your food? Did you think that I didn't get mine yet? You know, so always make sure that everyone at a table has received their food before you start eating. At a buffet or an event, Never overload your plate as it makes you look greedy. It is better to take less and return for seconds. Wow, I heard some noises over there. What was that? Woo! You like going for seconds or you like piling up your plate? You like piling up your plate? But do you go back for seconds? Yeah. Wow. All right. So you can go back for seconds or thirds because if you pile your plate up and you're walking away, what if it falls? Because you got too much on it. 
one of those, uh, 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 another, no, you know, you're too young for that, but anyway, it's a good thing to just go back for seconds. <laughs> it's a good thing, because guys, I'm just going to say, guys, do look at that, and they're like, wow, is she big? You know, they don't mind feeding you, but it's like, wow, she eats more than me. If you, especially at a buffet, just look at her face. <laughs> Make yourself a nice, decent plate. If you want seconds or third at a buffet, go back. It's okay to go back, but you don't want to look like you're just like bloody. You don't want to see that on your plate, you know? Princess face, I see you. Um, when you sit down, place a napkin on your lap. Sit up straight and do not slouch. Put both your hands on the table and never put your elbows. How many of us are guilty of putting our elbows on the table? But when I feel it, I remember it's time to come down. <laughs> gotta come back, gotta come back. So just try to practice that. If you have, you know, an issue with putting your elbows on the table, just when you feel it, just move them back. Just move them like we're like this. <laughs> It's, it's actually uncomfortable. Even though we think it's comfortable, it's really uncomfortable to do that. And you're, 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 I forget, it's a, it's a bone in your elbow that you're actually not, um, you're, you're kind of destroying the bone that's right here if you lean too much on it. So the, even the doctors will tell you, don't lean so much on this joint. On It's the bone here, but it's the joint that's actually being worn down. Okay, um, next. Dress. When you're outside, when you're in church, wherever you go, for men, always wear your pants with a belt at your waist. You know how the young guys walk around with their pants down here yes. and they think it's so attractive and we can't stand it and they just don't get it? We only have well, we have two young men in the room, but I think they got it covered. They do. But that's the thing, once again, about knowing your worth. Is that acceptable to you with the guy? I know it wouldn't be for me. So any of your brothers, your cousins, or whatever, try to encourage them and tell them it's not a good look, okay? Wear a nice collared shirt, like a polo or button down, but no white beaters, especially to church. We're talking about a church. You don't want to wear that to church as a male. It's, it's really, they think it's attractive, but it's not. It really isn't. Women should always dress modestly, Dresses and skirts should be knee length or below when you're at church. Outside of church, it's okay. If you're at church and you have on something that's not at your knee, just wear a lap scarf. A lap scarf, um, a little shawl that you may have, just throw it over your legs because it's just the right thing to do. And we don't want to make the brother stumble because they just they see just a little bit above the knee and they're like, hey, those legs. <laughs> so we want to just be um, as modest as we can. Blouses that are not that aren't too low cut. Basically, what I'm saying is keep your, yourself covered. Some people will not wear one of these, and what will you see? Cleavage. And we don't want to show that that's not to be seen by others. I really don't believe it is. Some people, and I'm just being honest and real, some people get boob jobs to, to enhance their look and they think that voluptuous look is something that is, is really wonderful to see, and it really isn't. And me, as I've, I've even said it to the women in my church, I don't like to see this in another woman. And I know brothers, they sometimes look at that as, wow, that's a little bit too much. I don't need to see that not now. And especially if you're single, they may say, you know what, that's something I really don't want to deal with because she's not modest enough. She's not thinking about what God wants for her and how the virtuous woman should look and should be. She, she's, not, she's not in line yet. She's not there. And he'll walk away, especially if he's walking right. So you always want to keep yourself modest. And that doesn't mean wearing dresses down to your ankles. 
It doesn't mean that they got to sweep the floor. It's just being modest. We don't, we don't want to see flesh. Hi, I hope you are enjoying First Lady Zimmerman. Man, I'm telling you, what a lesson. But right after the break, we're going to be finishing up her lesson on etiquette, okay? And I will talk to you at the end of the show. See you then. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. They say that when you're facing extreme danger, your life flashes before you. If you think that's sad, consider facing it before you even have enough life to flash before your eyes. Deaths and injuries can be prevented by using the right car seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to know what is appropriate for each age and size. This being our, our very meeting of the year, we felt it was very important to take a symbol like the U.S. flag to really emphasize patriotism for the scouts. So we wanted to set a lasting impression on our scouts on how to conduct a flag ceremony properly with reverence and respect. We thought that the Marines would be the perfect example on how to set that example, set that tone that will last for the year. And I wanted to make sure they see how we do everything with precision and movement. Once they see what we're doing, it can encourage them to do better and set a positive role model for everybody. So that way they can have a good idea how they're going to do it when, once they uh, do the color guard to uh, themselves. So. There was a little boy that actually came up to me and he said, thank you for what you do. We don't go out there and think, oh yeah, you know, we're doing it because we want something from it. We don't want people to thank us. We do it because it's just part of us. It's part of who we are. So when, you know, he came up to me, it, uh, you know, it made me want to do what I do even more. What I love about it is that it embraces the tradition. You take pride in what you do. It's everything that we as Marines stand for. Something about the tradition, the pride that you take with it, I wanted to be part of that. your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov. And for even gender, when you're in church on a Sunday, the ripped up jeans, that's really not appropriate. It really isn't. If that's all that you have, then come as you are. But if you've been in church for a while and someone is actually 
communicated this to you, it's so important that you dress your best on Sunday. Sunday is just the day of the Lord, to reverence the Lord, and it's so important that we do so in all the things that we do. Amen? Hygiene. It's important for us to bathe daily. We should brush our teeth one to two times daily and keep recommends or strips on hand. Wash your hands before and after meals. Turn away from other people when covering when other people and covering the nose and mouth with the tissue when sneezing. Sneezing. How many people know or ever seen people just go <laughs> and go, oh sorry. You know what? <laughs> That's not this is not even proper. It's really <clears throat> so that you're covering this way and the germs are not going out that way. And if you cough in your hand, it's so important that you sanitize or something after because you're going to touch somebody or you're going to touch something and believe it or not, that's how Ebola is being transferred to other people. Just by the transferring of bodily fluids, just by the, the touch of the hands and not taking care of being sanitized properly. Wash your hair every week or every two weeks if that's what you do. It's just a part of good hygiene. These things are important. And mainly with the bathing part, we don't want to be offensive to anyone else. That's, that's, we want to be clean, that's number one, but we don't want to be offensive to other people. And aromas and scents can be just, it can be offensive, whether, it, even perfumes, too much perfume. If you walk in a room and you don't, it's like a room full of people and all you smell is one perfume, that's too much. That's entirely too much. And that person probably walked in and walked out and the room is still saturated with perfume. Yeah, with the fragrance. So it's so important that we don't overdo that as well, but it's so important that we do bathe and brushing our teeth it helps to keep our keep bacteria down. It helps to keep our teeth white and breath mints and strips and gum. Keep your breath fresh. We have to talk to people on a daily basis. And when you're in someone's face and they're talking to you and you're smelling something that doesn't smell good, and here's the thing, it may not be that they're not taking care of their breath. It could be stomach problems. But if you are having stomach problems, that's different. That's totally different. But if you're not, it's important to keep mints and strips and things like that on your body because you don't want to be offensive again to someone else. If you've eaten fish and you're coming to church, make sure that you have the cheese. You want to put, you want to put mints in your mouth before you communicate with other people. Yeah, and even in your clothes. Right. If you're going to make fish and fried fish and then come to church, you have to know, that scent is going to be in your clothes. The oils that we fry fish in, and just even if you, well, bacon fish is not that bad, but just think of others and how it can be offensive to smelling that in a church environment. And even in, at work, same things. At church, refrain from walking and talking during multiple, refrain from the pulpit, Address leaders and adults appropriately and respectfully. Always stand when the scripture is being read, if it's required in your church. Always stand during prayer, once again, if that's required in the church. Never place gum under the chairs at church and remove all trash prior to leaving church. And most of these things are required at most churches. Some churches know you don't have to sit. I mean, you don't have to stand during um, scripture reading. But in most churches, people do stand when they pray. And if it's not required at your church, that's okay. But if it is, know what's required in your home church and be obedient. It's all about being obedient. It's not necessarily to your brother or sister in Christ, but it's being obedient to the Lord. I'm done. Any comments? You all good? We have a question from the Bible Yes, sir. 
I have a comment. Um, when you were saying about the young ladies with the dresses in the church, especially in church, and it's not so much as the guys are looking because it's flesh. Sometimes you make the guys uncomfortable. Comfortable. Yeah. Uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And the guys can um, focus because of that. Because one of the things about it is they're not trying to look, but sometimes they don't it's want there. to be accused right. of looking or accused of talking to someone that has something hanging out and someone sitting back saying, oh, I wonder why he's in front of talking to her because she's got it all out like that. You know, and that's one of the most important things about the guys is really trying to do it right to do right. Amen. Thank you. So it's important. I know we don't always think about, like I said, in a lot of situations, we don't think about how we impact other people. But I'm telling you, especially as Christians, everybody is always watching. Some people are waiting for us to fail. They're waiting to say they're just a mockery. They're, 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 they're just, they don't know what they're talking about. There's no real God. You know, the big boom thing, that's what it's really about. That's what they really, it's some people out there that's really thinking that way. And it's up to us to live right and to show them that God is real. Thank you for staying with us as we finish the First Lady Zimmerman Part 2 on etiquette. I hope you are being blessed. But we have more sessions from the summit that I would love to share with you. So come back and watch us again at DMV Experience. Again, this is Prentice, and remember, he is God of the City.